This is Pathology, Chapter 5, Part 2. The calcifying odontogenic cyst, or COC, is a non-aggressive cystic lesion lined by odontogenic epithelium. It closely resembles an ameloblastoma and has a characteristic feature called ghost cells. The lateral periodontal cyst is named for its location and is most often seen in the mandibular cuspid and premolar area. It is an asymptomatic unilocular or multilocular radiolucent lesion on the lateral surface of a tooth root. It is called a botrioid odontogenic cyst if it is multilocular. Lateral periodontal cysts are mostly found in males. The gingival cyst has the same type of lining as the lateral periodontal cyst, but is located in the soft tissue. Histologically, it shows a thin band of stratified squamous epithelium lining the gingival cyst. The treatment is surgical excision. The radiograph on the left shows a botrioid odontogenic cyst, and the image on the right shows a gingival cyst. The glandular odontogenic cyst is relatively recently defined as an odontogenic cyst. It exhibits a distinctive microscopic appearance. They are usually multi-cystic lesions. Some of the microscopic features include eosinophilic cuboidal cells on the surface of the epithelium and columnar cells with cilia are seen elsewhere on the surface. Intraepithelial microcysts or duct-like spaces within the epithelium and clear epithelial cells and mucous cells are also noted. Epithelial thickness thickenings showing whorls of cells similar to those seen in lateral periodontal cysts and botrioid cysts are often also seen. The glandular odontogenic cyst often presents as an enlargement of the bone. The posterior mandible and anterior maxilla are the most commonly reported locations. Both men and women may develop the cyst, and there is a peak incidence in the fifth decade. The radiographic appearance may be unilocular, but is often multilocular, appearing similar to that of an ameloblastoma or odontogenic keratocyst. When not completely surgically removed, these cysts have a high recurrence rate. Non-odontogenic cysts, or cysts that are not related to tooth development, include the nasopalatine canal cyst, the median palatine cyst, the globulomaxillary cyst, the median mandibular cyst, the nasolabial cyst, the branchial cleft cyst, also known as lymphoepithelial cyst, epidermal cyst, dermoid cyst and benign cystic teratoma, and the thyroglossal tract cyst. The nasopalatine canal cyst, or incisive canal cyst, is located within the nasopalatine canal or the incisive papilla. It generally occurs in males between 40 and 60 years old, is usually asymptomatic, and you may see a small pink bulge near the apices and between the roots of the maxillary central incisors on the lingual surface. The cyst is a well-defined radiolucent lesion and it may be oval or heart-shaped. Histologically, it is lined by epithelium varying from stratified squamous to pseudostratified ciliated columnar. Treatment is by surgical excision. The median palatine cyst is a well-defined unilocular radiolucency located in the midline of the hard palate.
Histologically, it is lined with stratified squamous epithelium surrounded by dense fibrous connective tissue. It is treated by surgical removal. The globulomaxillary cyst is a well-defined pear-shaped radiolucency located between the roots of the maxillary lateral incisor and cuspid. It's treated with surgical removal. The median mandibular cyst is a rare lesion located in the midline of the mandible. It is lined with squamous epithelium. Radiographically, it is a well-defined radiolucency visible below the apices of the mandibular incisors. Its treatment is also with surgical removal. The nasolabial cyst is a soft tissue cyst thought to originate from the lower anterior portion of the nasolacrimal duct. It is observed in adults between 40 to 50 years of age, and there is a 4 to 1 ratio in favor of females. Clinically, you would see an expansion or swelling in the mucobuccal fold in the area of the maxillary canine and the floor of the nose. Histologically, it is lined with pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium and multiple goblet cells. It is also treated by surgical excision. The branchial cleft cyst or lymphoepithelial cyst is most commonly found in major salivary glands. It is a stratified squamous epithelial lining surrounded by a well-circumscribed component of lymphoid tissue. It appears to arise from epithelium trapped in a lymph node during development. It is most currently most commonly found intraorally on the floor of the mouth and the lateral borders of the tongue. It appears as a pinkish yellow raised nodule. It is also treated with surgical excision. An epidermal cyst is a raised nodule on the skin of the face or neck. It may be noted intraorally on occasion. Histologically, it is lined by keratinizing epithelium that resembles the epithelium of the skin. The lumen is usually filled with keratin scales. It is also treated by surgical excision. The dermoid cyst is a developmental cyst often present at birth or noted in young children. It is usually found on the floor of the mouth when it is located in the oral cavity and may cause tongue displacement. It may have a doughy consistency when palpated. The dermoid cyst and benign cystic teratoma histologically are lined with orthokeratinized stratified squamous epithelium surrounded by a connective tissue wall. The lumen is usually filled with keratin, hair follicles, sebaceous glands, and sweat glands may be seen in the cyst wall. The benign cystic teratoma resembles a dermoid cyst, plus it can have teeth, bone, muscle, and nerve tissue in the lesion wall. It is also treated with surgical excision. Thyroglossal tract or duct cyst forms along the tract that the thyroid gland follows in development. It is found in young individuals less than 20 years of age and has no sex predilation. The treatment is also excision of the cyst as well as the tract. Pseudocysts are not really cysts because they are not lined with epithelium. Three examples are the static bone cyst, the simple bone cyst, and the aneurysmal bone cyst. 
The static bone cyst, also known as the lingual mandibular bone cavity or Staphne's bone cyst, is a pseudocyst. It is not a pathologic cavity. Clinically, it is an anatomic depression on the posterior lingual area of the mandible. No treatment is necessary. It is a well-defined cyst-like radiolucency, which may be observed in the radiograph of the posterior region of the mandible inferior to the mandibular canal. The simple bone cyst, or traumatic bone cyst, also known as hemorrhagic bone cyst, is a pathologic cavity in bone that is not lined with epithelium. It may be associated with trauma. It is treated by curettage on the wall that lines the void. Radiographically, it is a well-defined unilocular or multilocular radiolucency, characteristically showing scalloping around the roots of teeth. An aneurysmal bone cyst is a pseudocyst and consists of blood-filled spaces rounded, surrounded by multinucleated giant cells and fibrous connective tissue. Radiographically, it has a multilocular or honeycombed or soap bubble appearance and is usually seen in persons younger than 30 years old. It has a slight predilection for females and is also treated by surgical excision. Developmental abnormalities of teeth can include abnormalities in the number, the size, the shape, the structure, or the eruption of teeth. Abnormalities in the number of teeth include anodontia, hypodontia, and supernumerary teeth. Anodontia is the complete congenital lack of teeth. Total anodontia is lack of all teeth. It may be associated with ectodermal dysplasia. Hypodontia is lack of one or more teeth. The most common missing permanent teeth are mandibular and maxillary third molars, maxillary lateral incisors, and mandibular second premolars. The most common missing deciduous tooth is the mandibular incisor. Hypodontia tends to be familial. It may be a component of a syndrome. Treatment may require prosthetic replacement, orthodontic evaluation, and treatment may also be necessary. Supernumerary teeth are extra teeth that may result from the formation of extra tooth buds in the dental lamina or from the cleavage of already existing tooth buds. It may occur in either deciduous or permanent dentition and is most often seen in the maxilla. The most common supernumerary tooth is the mesiodens. It is located between the maxillary incisors and may be inverted when seen on radiographs. A distomolar is the second most common supernumerary tooth and is located distal to the third molar. Here are some pictures of supernumerary teeth. This is a mesiodense. This is a mesiodense. This is also a mesiodense. Treatment of supernumerary teeth. Erupt teeth may require removal if they cause crowding, malposition of adjacent teeth, or non-eruption of normal teeth. Non-erupted teeth should be extracted because a risk exists for cyst development around the crown. Multiple supernumerary teeth may be associated with cleidocranial dysplasia or Gardner syndrome. This concludes Pathology, Chapter 5, Part 2.